Hello, respiratory therapists and respiratory therapy students. Today, we are gonna do a really quick comparison between peak inspiratory pressures and plateau pressures. These are two very important pressures to look at when you're doing a patient ventilator system check because they're gonna tell you where the problem is in the patient's lungs, okay? So let's just look over it, let's define it, and look at each of these pressures to see what they tell us. All right, number one. What is it? What is the peak inspiratory pressure or the PIP? Okay, the PIP is the pressure in the airways and the alveoli during inspiration. So when the ventilator pushes the tidal volume into the lungs, it's pressure that's generated as that tidal volume is moving into the airway and into the alveoli causing alveolar stretch. Okay, whereas plateau pressure, after the peak or after the tidal volume is pushed in and that peak inspiratory pressure is generated, we can make the ventilator hold that volume in the lungs. Typically, we do an inspiratory pause for about half a second. That's going to give us enough to get a plateau pressure. So what we should have is that tidal volume goes in. We should have a peak inspiratory pressure that is generated. And as we hold that volume in the lungs, we should then have a plateau pressure that's generated. All right, if you've done it correctly, peak inspiratory pressure will always be higher than plateau pressures, all right? So those are the first things you have to know. What does peak inspiratory pressure include? Well, as it's the tidal volume moving into the airways and into the alveoli, it includes airway resistance and compliance. I'm gonna say this a little bit differently. If I look at the ventilator and the peak inspiratory pressures are increasing, I know that's a bad thing, but I don't know why. The problem could be in the airway or it could be in the alveoli. So when we say compliance, we're really talking about alveolar compliance here. So peak inspiratory pressure by itself is pretty useless other than to tell us there's a problem or there is not a problem. We start drilling down to where the problem is by looking at the plateau pressures. The plateau pressures tell us about problems in the alveoli. It tells us about alveoli compliance specifically. All right, so again, we measured the peak inspiratory pressure during peak flow delivery as the tidal volume is being pushed in, and then we measured plateau pressure during the inspiratory pause or inspiratory hold, a half second to a second pause, doesn't need to be a second, that's excessively long. Just hold a little bit of a pause. All right, normal values. Normal peak inspiratory pressure should be less than 35. Normal plateau pressure should be less than 30. Here's what you really need to know. Peak inspiratory pressure, plateau pressures, okay? They should be relatively close together. So this should be less than 35. Peak should be less than 35. Plat should be less than 30. This is how we're about to know if something's going on, okay? So we'll have an elevation in peak inspiratory pressure by itself. If this is what happened, here's peak and plateau. If peak pressure starts rising alone and the plateau pressure stays the same, the problem is in the airway. You need to check for bronchospasms. You need to check for airway secretions. Maybe the patient has a uh, basal or inflammation. Okay. You need to check for changes within the airway. If the PIP peak inspiratory pressure is rising independently of the plateau. Now, if we see this relationship in the plateau pressure, if the plateau pressure starts to move higher, what it's going to do is it's going to push the PIP. Do you see how that happens? So as the plateau pressure elevates, so does the peak inspiratory pressure. But when we have elevations in the plateau pressure, that means something's wrong in the alveoli and compliance is decreasing. So this is any alveolar disease, ARDS, pneumonia, pulmonary edema, anything that compromises the alveoli as it worsens, plateau pressure is going to elevate and it will push peak inspiratory pressures up with that. All right, why is this a concern? Well, elevated peak inspiratory pressures, when we said it's an airway problem, well, we have a resistance problem, okay? That's, it's gonna be harder to push the air through the airway. We need to open it up so that it's easier. The big thing about the plateau pressures being elevated 
the lungs are super, super stiff. So we could be causing ventilator induced lung injury, applying too much, too much of a pressure and the alveoli actually ruptured, causing a pneumothorax. All right, corrective actions. If we have elevation and peak inspiratory pressures by itself, and we're thinking airway, we need to suction. We need to give a bronchospasm. Maybe we need to think about uh, steroids to minimize the airway inflammation. If we have um, elevated plateau pressures, meaning we have a low lung compliance, if it's a disease state like ARDS, we definitely need to look at lowering the tidal volumes. We want to protect the lung so that there isn't any lung injury. So you have to figure out what disease process you have going on and then correct that process. So here's your comparison. Hope this has helped. Follow me on my Instagram or Facebook channel and I'm gonna have a question that deals with this this week. See you soon.